Hi, Taurus Seeker. I didn't know this was our time. I didn't think I'll do Taurus today. I'm Taurus. My North Node is in Taurus. I'm very dominant Taurus. Um, but slightly before I came to do this video, I had a very intense past lifetime uh, realization. It was so intense that I couldn't even put it into words. Um, like I just met a friend of mine and I couldn't even, I couldn't talk about it. And I still have a lot of digesting to do. So I planned on doing this video now and I didn't think I'll do Taurus because I like to keep mine either in the beginning or towards the end. I don't know. It's just how I, <laughs> it's just how I do it. Um, but I then I plus, press, plus, pressed play and like, hey Taurus, <laughs> came out. So I guess, I guess this is what we're doing. Taurus Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. North Node, whatnot, for the month of November. Venus is now retrograding in our opposition sign, uh, Scorpio. My dog is Scorpio. It's so funny. It's so cute. Um, and I don't know about you guys. I mean, share with me, comment. But for me, this has been mind-blowing because I like the whole concept of diving into the subconscious into our dark spaces i don't fear them i acknowledge and respect them and therefore i can work with them and work through them um so for me i, I wasn't even remotely worried about venus retrograding in scorpio the opposite i think we have absolutely nothing to worry about in regards to everything that is ending in this time a probably for the reason anything that is being processed hey thank you for the opportunity for healing it's borderline miraculous like um a compound of <laughs> of psychological energetic cognitive kind of um, workshop <laughs> it's very intense um you save you a lot of money on a psychologist throughout many years just go through venus retrograding in scorpio and there you have it <laughs> beautiful time guys enjoy it um be grateful for it okay okay i know i'm in the right place do you know you're in the right place taurus if you tend to overthink or plan and then if plans change then you get all upset and discouraged then you might you might be feeling out of place or you might be thinking that you're out of place but you're in the right place wherever that may be i don't care where you're sitting right now i don't care your status uh, your geography your work your relationships this is accurate this is healing this is expanding this is accurate and the more you fight it the more it will hurt so stop just stop just breathe it in the universe the divine creation are smarter more creative more powerful than we can ever imagine definitely much more than we can think or see in our limited sight. There's a phrase that I love. It's not our job to determine what is possible or impossible. It is nature's job. So don't set yourself the how. Set yourself the what. What is it that you wish for? What is it that you seek, seeker? Let energy, let the divine take care of the rest. Don't be arrogant. Don't try to control it. 
No, and then let go. The hardest, toughest action is the no action. That doesn't come from fear or laziness. The lack of action that comes from patience. Big difference. Big difference, big difference, Taurus. First card, yay, nine of pentacles. Gotta love that. Independence. Self-sustaining. Being in your matter, being in your success, being in yourself. After hard work. So whatever it is that you have achieved to this point, well earned. Acknowledge that for yourself. Enjoy it. This card wanted to come out, but it didn't. <laughs> um, welcome to the Existential Shift. If you're a newcomer, my name is Morgane. We will finish this reading with messages from the Akashic Tarot. There is an extended reading. I will explain further how it will look. <laughs> this is so funny. I just see you guys as my family, even if it's the first time you're visiting. I'm like, of course we've known each other forever. Which reminds me, thank you so much for your subscriptions. Thank you for joining my family. The Existential Shift. You are very, very welcome here, Seeker. Thank you. All right, great start, Nine of Pentacles. How about we finish this reading with that? <laughs> okay, no, we're not gonna finish it here. Four of Wands, wow, Taurus, we're on a roll. So there's independent success, strong self-esteem and acknowledgement, but there's also teamwork. Other people acknowledging you, other people being happy for you, trusting in you. Cooperation, commodity, friendship. If you know me, don't be like, oh, she sugarcoats. No, 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 no. If you've been here for a little bit, you know I don't sugarcoat shit. This is great. This is, I made it on my own and people are happy for me. People are happy for you. People, You made people want to be happy for you. I don't know if you were modest throughout the process. I don't know if you shared your gift with others. I don't know if you gave, whether or not you had or you didn't have to give. But people are now following you. They're rooting for you. Four of Wands. Um, Four of Wands is can be a celebration, could be holiday, could be happy home family, but this is the mythic tarot, in case you were wondering. And in the mythic tarot, the wand suit is uh, represents the story of Jason and the golden sheep, golden flea, whatever. And in this part, he's on a journey to um, regain his crown and his kingdom. And this is a winning point. It's a stepping stone. It's not the entire journey. He's not there yet, but he has achieved an achievement and he did it with cooperation and with a team. And they're, they're, they believe in him. They fight for him. <laughs> and of course, we jump to the Ten of Wands. This is the same character, Jason. Six of Cups. The star, let me see. Oh, here you can see, great. The star, and retro, <laughs> retrograde to the three of wands, right after the star, the star, Venus in retro. Okay. So some of us have achieved, succeeded, But now maybe or about to feel a little bit overwhelmed with the responsibilities and what it means to actually live the life that these achievement achievement requires or maybe it comes with certain mundane 
uh, daily necessities that we need to go about in order to live those, this life or to sustain this achievement. And some of us are either looking back to the past to when things were simpler, perhaps. Maybe at a long lost love. Maybe now that you have everything, you're realizing the one thing that is missing, maybe it's matters of the heart, the star and the six of cups. Maybe someone is looking back at you, thinking where you are with longing. Maybe you're doing the same for someone else. And this whole going back to the three of wands thing, we went from the four of wands to the ten of wands, feeling heavy and burdened, and then right back to the three of wands. This is very Venus retrograde. This is very, um, going back to how we started and where we started to bring something that we missed, that we couldn't carry with us in the journey. Okay, maybe it was it's a person that we couldn't take with us. Maybe it's a pet that we couldn't take with us. Maybe it's an idea, um, an emotion, a vision, a goal, an object, something that we had to leave behind. Now it feels empty without, and we want to go back to either fix it or bring it with us. Some of you, it's a journey back home just to kind of reconnect with the people that have supported you in the start. Some of you, you're going back somewhere to bring something with you or someone with you or someone is doing that for you. I feel like someone might be coming for you, Taurus, to take you back home. It could be symbolic, right? So take it as you take it, as it resonates. And of course, go back more towards uh, middle of November, go back, come back to this reading and then make the connections. And if, if we're already saying that, then I recommend right now for you to go back to the, to the October readings because this is mid-October, uh, last, last third of, of the month. And this is the time to really examine the energies from a new point of view of having already been in it or past it. Make the connections. Um, and the advice will be more relevant than ever. Okay? So... This is not the tower type of going back to the foundations to fix things. There's nothing shaky. It's just something is missing. Something of the heart. Some kind of longing. Maybe it's a hobby that you left out. You know, you've been so busy and you stopped taking certain classes. I don't know. It could be anything. You know, that reminds you of who you are and where you come from. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. See him? Just saying. No relation, no connection. Just because I felt like it. Princess Bride. Come on. Go anywhere. Anywhere, anytime. Okay. Let's keep going, Taurus. I'm liking this one so far. I'm <laughs> very surprised that we're doing Taurus. This is so weird. Weird, but, gr but good. Weird, but good. And it resonates. It feels, it feels right, guys. Dear cards, spirit, help me guide Taurus through sun, moon, rising. You can watch your other placements for a broader picture, by the way. Um, both for this month, for November, and for past month. Let's guide towards through November. Wow, okay. Temperance and the chariot. Temperance and the chariot. So both t temperance and the chariot, these are two cards that speak of oppositions. In the Temperance, this is the card of the Alchemist and the Pure Love. It's where you take different oppositions, different matters, um, different extremities, just differences, and you mold them together with balance to attain a new outcome, a new matter. It's 
kind of magical. It's 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 the embodiment and the best form of balancing all elements together. It's it's just a form of harmony, balance, purity, and creation. Something out of nothing. Um, the chariot also speaks of different forces. You see here the. In, in this card, it's the two horses, the black and the white. And the, in other cards, it's, the, it's this phoenix. There's always the element of the black and white animals that uh, represent our inside, our archetype, our, um, our ancient archetype, our instincts that are pulling us in different directions. This could be a reflection of reality pulling us in different directions and vice versa, vice versa, as above, so below, as within, so without, etc. Um, temperance balances with harmony the chariot requires aggression and strength to achieve balance the chariot calls for taking control of the opposing forces taking control of your life of your chariot of your journey to be on one path to achieve balance so this is inner harmonious balance this is um exterior kind of aggressive balance balancing so i'm guessing so i guess that what they're saying is like everything goes just find your path inner work exterior work alchemy actions be on the path that most resonates with you that is most harmonious to you Take no prisoners. Take no prisoners. Be vigilant. Be very, very loyal to your higher self right now, to your soul that is calling you and go there. Some of you have a real calling. I see here with the star and with temperance and the chariot and, and the whole aspect of uh, the suit of wands and, and, and the mythical story of Jason the Golden Flea. This is about pursuing your <coughs> your highest aspirations and your highest goals. And there is a calling. Now, whether or not it makes sense in the physical world, in the 3D, whether or not it sits well with your plans, irrelevant. Really, really, really listen to your intuition. Listen to the signs of the universe synchronicity serendipity different sides i have a good friend that i love and admire he likes to say well only if it's from god kind of says it sarcastically because he's not a religious person but it's like i'll only pursue it or, or be there if it's from god and it's like i want to shake him and be like what do you think that that, that thing will have a sign on its forehead and be like I am from God. You need to listen to nature, to circumstances, to to the little things. That's how the divine speaks with us, okay? The little signs. That's what you guys need to listen to. And, you know, God works in mysterious ways and speaks in mysterious ways. So if you want signs from the universe, from the divine, from God, whatnot, they're all over. You just need to listen. It might just be a language that you're not used to reading. Oliver! Oliver Boyna! See what happened just now? That was very symbolic. I literally yelled at my dog and was very clear to him that he can't go in the direction that he was trying to go. He would not listen. Because there was no sign in front of his nose saying, Not there. You turn, go back there. This I'm trying to show you. There's a calling. I'm calling. <laughs> and he doesn't necessarily understand the sense in that because compared to me, he's a dog. He doesn't see the reason in everything. Just like we don't always see the reason in everything. We see what we see in front of our eyes. So if something is calling us to a different direction than the one we're like plot, uh, plunting into... We insist. No, this is the this this is what I was supposed to do. This is what I planned. This is what this is what I thought I should would what not. 
but you're called. Your ears are ringing. Your heart is banging. Your body is almost like, Ugh, but we want to go. And you're like, no, I'm a Taurus. I'm fixed. I'm stubborn. Sorry, no shade, but you know, we're Taurus. We're fixed. We're stubborn. You might have other placements in your chart. It makes it easier, but you do have the tendency for it. So the cards are a lot are like there is a calling listen to it don't argue listen to the signs signs can be events can be people could be offers could be opportunities could be simply a weird intuition could be accidents or flukes could be car breaking down could be anything that either makes you go faster or delays you. Listen to the circumstances. Don't complain. Try to see beyond. Wait. The moon. Hi, moon. Three heads for the dog and for the head. Confusing. Driving through the subconscious, very confusing. dark there's no signs one second is flat one second is rocky one second is mountains one second is valleys it's confusing a lot of forces are pulling some of you in different directions and you're feeling confused because there is what you planned and there is what is presented in front of you there's what you thought you wanted and then there's something new that is calling you. This is not a confusing, weird, bad thing. It's nature. We change, we evolve, we rediscover ourselves. It's okay. It's okay to feel like you are in different places at the same time. Like I'm physically here, mentally there, emotionally there, energetically elsewhere. It's okay to feel like you're hopping between universes, between states of mind. Look at it as a road trip in your psyche. An adventure. Once you'll stop fearing it, you'll start getting really excited and enjoy it. Some of you have been calling someone from the heart. Your heart has been calling someone. You might not even know who that person is. Maybe it's an essence. They heard you. They have been listening to you, whether they know it or not, for a really long time. They know you better than you think. They know you better than they are willing to admit they know you. The reason it's so confusing is because you guys have walked different paths in different lifetimes together and apart. And every time you meet, it's like all these places, all these energies are kind of coming up at once and you're like, wait, but what is what? All it, it's all, it's all of it. It's all of it. All of it is true. You're not crazy. You feel crazy, but you're not crazy. And some of you, just like I just had, um, are starting to have a lot of recollections and, you know, you, you start to recall. It could be childhood, it could be past lifetime, it could be energies. Sit with it, 
cry with it, breathe with it, it's okay. I need you to have zero judgment uh, towards, towards yourself right now. You can't afford a judgment. You can't afford trying to put it in a, in a box with explanations and tags. This is this, this is that, this is from there, this one. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Don't do the Virgo thing right now. I love Virgos. I love Virgos. But don't do the Virgo thing right now. Healing through dissecting. Let everything kind of merge into each other until it finds itself. You know how matter attracts matter? Mercury will, mercury drops will um, slide towards each other, right? If there's like a lot of drops of mercury on the floor, they will slide toward each other. They, they literally are pulled like gravitation and they will form one puddle. The different forces, elements, energies, memories will find their way inside of you. Let them. Let them do them. Let them do their nature. And this is really a time to listen to your instincts, Taurus. I have no swords here. <laughs> I have major arcana, massive spiritual, alchemical, psychological major arcanas and I have wands and just a little bit of cups and coins but no thought analytical cognitive thought process just let nature be let yourself be don't try to, to don't try to reason with it I knew the moon will come up today. Seven of Cups. Well, they like to go together, the moon and Seven of Cups. Where does reality ends and illusion starts? Where does reality ends and illusion start? You're not going to know this month. Don't try. Just feel. Be in the feels, Taurus, because the child in you and the adult in you are now having a lot of conversations. They are really clearing the ground. They're kind of um, touching base with each other about their own experiences of things because events from zero to, till today your inner child sees it in one way, your adult mature individual sees it in another way, two different points of view, that can cause um, a split, right, in the personality, in the psyche. Now we're lo looking to balance it. You see how she's uh, similar here to these two characters? This is, she's a mature woman, this is a, a young child. And we're balancing those characteristics within us. And it gets confusing. What are the events that we remember from our childhood that actually occurred the way we remember them? Um, or maybe it's just the way our inner child perceived them. And today, from a different point of view, we would be like, oh, that wasn't a big deal at all. Or, oh, that actually didn't happen the way I thought it happened. You know, our mind is very tricky. It, it, when we forget something, it tends to want to um, complete the gap and kind of finish, um, you know, um, fill the void. And then imagination kicks in. It's like, oh, this and this happened because it makes sense because from between one to four, I don't remember. So two and three must have been there. Okay. Um, let, let, let those um, personalities in you convey. Don't be judgmental. Who's right? Who's wrong? You'll have the understandings. The nature of your mind is balancing itself right now. Venus in retrograde is doing a lot of work for you. Let energy work for you. Don't fight it, please. There's a lot of healing going on right now 
it's very important for your future Taurus. I really, really, really love and appreciate this reading. <sighs> my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Just want, just wanted to say it again. I just wanted to say it again. Because I want it. <laughs> okay. Let's keep going for my amazing Torians. For November. And then I'm going to show you how your extended is going to look like. I'm, I rearranged the table. Um, ooh, Queen of Wands. Self control is restored, fire is restored. You suddenly know exactly what you want. Also, this is the first character entering this reading. Someone exterior to our psychic. Queen of Wands could be Leo, could be Aries, could be Sagittarius. I have a lot of fire on this table. I have a lot of water on this table. And the five of cups okay someone just wants to be free and have their independence and they are leaving someone else behind now I don't know if you're leaving someone else behind or they're leaving you behind it doesn't have to be a breakup this could just be someone who's in and out um, having fun living their life they're not out there to hurt you um, this is not about the individual that is allegedly being left this is about the individual that wants to express themselves and be. So, whoever feels left behind, don't make it about yourself. Could be you, could be the other individual. Also, part of the thing that will come up with all the psychological work and the healing that I was talking about for so long um, is this uh, feeling of abandonment. If some of you are dealing with the fear of abandonment, this will come up this month. And interestingly enough, I feel like the way you will touch it and heal it is by being like, can you get out of your own ass? <laughs> Not everything is about you. Not everything is about staying with you or leaving you. People have their thing. They come and they go and they have their own struggles and their own uh, childhood issues and feelings of abandonment so some of them might be leaving you because they're scared that you're about to leave them so they're trying to protect their heart some of them are just you know it's just it's over and you know it's over you just kept holding on to it because you didn't want to have an ending or you didn't want to feel again the failure of an ending or something didn't work out I feel like the way you will handle this if it's relevant to you you will handle this issue is just by being like like, hold on, why, why am I so dramatic? Things start, things end. It's like a, a more of a lighthearted, kind of independent, fiery, not holding um, too, too much kind of energy is going to kick in. And you're going to be like, ah, can, maybe I'll just have some fun and not overthink and not... Uh, let my fears run the show. I mean, who cares that this person left ages time ago? I mean, okay, bye. <laughs> and you've been carrying this for so long, right? I need to heal because this person has left me. And now you're like, why am I still on this topic? Like, what was this waste of energy and life and time? Not look guys I love you okay this is not this is me being helpful tough love yeah self humor you have to be able to laugh at yourself sometimes and be like maybe I was just being over dramatic maybe I need to look at we all are sometimes your turn Taurus to let go
If they were yours, they'll come back. If they won't come back, they were never yours to begin with. You know that. Bye. Have fun. <laughs> okay, maybe see you around. Maybe not. All right, bye. I'm going to go out for beer with friends. Chilling out, right? There is the narrative here um, of someone really looking back at a long lost love or something. Um, for some of you, it's really coming back. There are those of you that it's actually coming back in the shape of the person. Um, and of course, that's not surprising, Venus retrograde. Um, for some of you, it just comes back in your psychology, in your psyche, and you just, you kind of process it to release it. Um, I can already show you a part of the extended because I have five, six, and seven of cups. I'm going to uh, address the uh, psychological, the uh, chronological aspect of it, the five, six, seven. I'm going to look at that story. Um, and I have a few majors. I have Temperance, Star, Chariot, and the Moon. And those are a narrative of their own. That's just the beginning of the extended. Then I clear the table. I do a new shuffle of a Celtic cross, which is potentially a completely different narrative um, and also a different system, a different type of reading where it's usually more, um, more of a specific narrative for the month of November. And then we finish up with the runes. Normally I use my hematite runes, but today I feel like my citron. Sun runes. Sun. Sorry, am I being annoying? Here. All right. We're not over yet, right, Taurus? Let's keep going. Let's keep going with this general reading for the month of November. Seven of Pentacles. Another seven on the table. The Chariot is seven. Seven of Cups and now the Seven of Pentacles. It's also going to be a part of our extended. Three sevens. I need more. Clarify Seven of Pentacles. Clarify Seven of Pentacles pentacles and or show me more please for Taurus. some of you are just simply as is you know seven of pentacles saving money um, building foundations for the future being very smart with your um, with your 3d matter world with your funds with your properties with your work with your life you're just planning oh nine of god I want you to see it clearly, son. Come on. Let them see. There it is. Okay, and here we have another we have nine of pentacles and nine of cups on the table. That's beautiful. That's earth and water. Of the nine. Okay. Alright. Ah, what I was about to say should be in the extended. I don't care. I'll give you a taste of what I do in the extended. So Two nines, it's a completion, it's a very well-made completion of um, lesson when it comes to romance, okay, partnerships. Whatever it is that you have, okay, maybe it's that um, five of cups thing of, you know, releasing the whole fear of abandonment kind of thing and just letting go and having fun. Uh, anything that is of, you know, psychological or energetic that you've been carrying with you, maybe a repetition, karmic repetition, psychological repetition in partnerships, that you really, um, something clicked and you've learned the lesson really well, you integrated uh, the lesson either now or throughout November. And you've been smart about it. Seven of Pentacles, it's been, it's been working diligently and efficiently um, on the healing and, and, and on actually expressing it, um, expressing this newfound knowledge and this newfound healing with behavior with communication, um, it feels better to be around you or you feel better being around someone, you know, a, counter, a potential counterpart. And this leads 
to a really great union that is very bountiful and loving um, and allows freedom. It's a great cycle that ends, that allows a new cycle to begin. And that's how I connect the numbers, the connections. It's just the first part of the extent of how I do things. I could have been like that, saved it just for the extended, but I gave it to you because I'm so awesome. Sorry. Okay. Union card on the table, a wish fulfilled. Maybe it's that person that you've been longing for, that you've been missing, that you want to go back and take with you. Maybe it's someone doing it with you. Oh, the wheel of fortune. Amazing. Yes. You have changed the wheel is inside yourself. You've changed the mechanism. And therefore, the mechanism of reality, the wheels of reality of the, of the three gods of fate, three goddesses of fate, is now also changing to adapt to that newfound inner freedom. And it will reflect in your reality. That's fantastic. So the next relationship or union or love will have the expression of that healing process that you just went through. And you've done a lot of work or about to do a lot of work. And you're literally changing your destiny. Carl Jung said, um, as long as our subconscious, uh, until our subconscious becomes our conscious, it will rule our life and we will call it fate. Repeated events in your life, karmic cycles, same type of partners, same types of endings, same types of pains keep repeating themselves. Oh, it's my destiny. It's my fate. No, it's your subconscious and your, and, and, and the energy that you've been carrying from past lifetimes potentially that you keep re-manifesting because you're not releasing it. You're not uh, dissolving it. You're not processing it properly. You're not learning. And now that you've learned and now that you've completely broken the wheel and start a new cycle that is different from the inside, from, from what your heart echoes, from what your, what your subconscious echoes, now the reality really shifts. And now you get to really have your wish fulfilled. Not the illusion of the wish. Not the almost, but the exact. Bottom of the deck, the emperor. Aries, Taurus. Or just a very... Um, prominent, dominant figure in your life. Okay, now I'm going to show it to you. And I will conclude this reading. Then I'm going to show you your extended. And then we're going to do messages from the Akashic Tarot. Great. <laughs> Let's conclude this reading, please, for my amazing Torian Seekers. If you want to study tarot, by the way, I teach tarot. Link below in the magical information box where all the magic stuff are happening. There's a link to the extended over there. There's a link to my tarot masterclass over there. And there's my email so you can email me uh, to book a private reading. I do it globally all over the world, so it doesn't matter where, where you are. We can connect glad happily, okay? Um, okay. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, North Node. <laughs> For November, let's conclude this wonderful, wonderful reading, please. Another seven. Okay, four sevens. That's big. That's big. By the way, uh, multiple nines and the wheel of fortune is also uh, meaningful that I will leave to the extended I'm sorry I need to have some flesh over there <laughs> okay and hey you also want to support me in my channel right you want me to be able to keep doing this so welcome to the real world mm. okay seven of wands but please clarify some sort of battle struggle conflict nonsense non-essential though it's not something to over worry about but i want to see more clarification the high priestess hmm. i have the high priestess and the moon on the table 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, some of you are really connected to my path right now and are going through or about to go through a lot of um, rec um, memories, things coming up from your past lifetime. There is the element of witchcraft here. So all I can say, this is a very powerful put in time for you guys. Be careful what you wish for and how you wish for it. Remember what I said, don't worry about the how, worry about the what. Make sure that the what that you're asking is for your highest good. Make sure that you're asking it with light, with absolute no attempt to control a different soul or someone else's free will. Even trying to heal someone without their permission or consent is control. First of all, who said that you know best or better than them? Second of all, even if you do, they have the right to either accept or not. And every energetic action has retaliation, right? Action, reaction. The cycle. So whatever energy you kind of put out in the universe, it has waves, it echoes, and in one way or another it comes back to you. Now we don't know if it's going to come back to you the way you want it, or maybe not, right? So make sure you're asking something for your highest good, without mentioning specific names or whatnot. Some of you are praying to, um, to the goddesses. We have the three goddesses here, the three goddesses here, and the three goddesses here. It's the maiden, the woman, and the crow, the, you know, the, the, the child, the woman, and, and the old woman. Past, present, future. Some of you are really tapping into your inner goddesses and are doing work with the goddess of the moon. There's Persephone here, the goddess of the Underrealm, the goddess of the living and of the dead. There's the goddesses of fate. And I'll be damned for forgetting the goddess here that I want to talk about. Also very similar to Persephone. Uh, she's actually, I feel like, the one who, who might have guided, helped guide Persephone uh, in the Underrealm while she was doing the passage. Hecate! Ah! Hecate! So sorry, Hecate. How could I? <laughs> They're powerful um, deities. So if you're working with them, I encourage that. I respect that. But make sure you're being wise and you're honoring their energy. And don't ask too much. This is very um, confused, kind of scattered energy. Don't ask too much. See, don't, don't confuse them. <laughs> because then different things will come from different things and it will be just, um, you know, like not a good recipe. The High Priestess really calls, it's, it's again, it's the calling of, you know, going deep to our psyche and Psyche and Cupid here speaking of this represents the story of Psyche, the goddess of, of the, of the um, psychology of the spirit, and Cupid, the god of love, Eros, son of Aphrodite. How love and spirit always go together. Never mind, I'm going in too deep to the mythology. Sorry. Oh, everything is falling. Ooh, the high priestess just fell. With the Two of Swords. Okay. This is our conclusion. Two twos, by the way. Okay, we're going to have an interesting extended. Um, yeah, this is the psychology. This is the things that are coming up from our childhood. How our parents treated us. How they used to fight between themselves. Um... You're really, um, you're being called to go within to your early childhood and process some things 
and rethink some things and kind of change the memories from the memory of the little kid that developed a fear of abandonment and try to look at it from you know a broader perspective of how it kind of led you to your destiny and also from the 3d mature more of the adult kind of point of view of of the events and maybe looking at it differently and that will allow to also change the experience that kind of you know got stuck in your subconscious see him he's like ah, i can't handle it their parents his parents are fighting and he just like develops um a denial mechanism this is the the kid that grew up with parents who fight a lot and then he grew up to be someone who just can't handle any sort of yellings and definitely no no type of conflict because every little thing triggers his childhood and how massive it was and that that kind of just takes him back so there's a lot of uh, projection right and it's really unhealthy for this now grown up to project everything from their childhood on people who are actually have nothing to do with it you know in relationships and jobs it's just it's sabotaging um, and it's also not fair to him because he can't really mature and move on from this so this is this is, it's now you need to make such a great okay uh, moon retrogrades into in Scorpio uh, Venus I'm sorry retrogrades in Scorpio until uh, October 31st do the work we're now in October 19th you have 11 days and then it moves to Libra that will be the time to find the balance right now we feel chariot now then Libra will come to balance it okay now we have all these understandings now the first part of November will be balancing it all and kind of finding harmony with all of it and I feel like we'll know about towards the end of November more from the Celtic cross and the extended now I keep mentioning the extended but what what am I showing you all right so let's start with the obvious let's put all the major arcanas and I'm reorganizing them chronologically to this is 10 the wheel of fortune I'm sorry first chariot which is number seven then the wheel of fortune which is number 10 temperance is number 14 the star is 17 the moon is 18 I'm not done yet. After I show you your extended, then we're going to do messages from the Akashic Terra. Now, 10 underneath the Wheel of Fortune, because it's also 10. Seven stay, six goes. I'm not sure yet if I'll do this. Feels like too much a little bit. Nine and nine. Okay, seven under the chariot, also seven of cups, and then there was seven of pentacles and seven of wands. These are our four sevens, two tens, um, definitely two nines here. We'll also connect them to the wheel of fortune. I have a way of connecting it. I feel like we already spoke about this connection, the psychological part. Five, six, yeah, we already talked about that. Okay, let's leave some for the Celtic cross, right? Okay, so we're going to talk this, we're going to talk this, we're going to talk this, and we're going to talk this, and then... Hey, hi. And then we'll clean, do a Celtic cross, and it, that will be the main part of the extended, actually. And then message from the rune, a rune for you to take with um, for November. Okay, guys. Wow, 53 minutes already. I haven't had that long reading in a really long time. Taurus, you're so special. <laughs> there was a lot to figure out. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. 
speaking of things that we've been carrying with us for years and have become our faith just because we carry it in our psychology. Okay, message from the Akashic uh, Tarot, which are the Akashic Records, please, for my Taurus Seeker for the month of November. Oh, okay. had two fell one face up one face down so I'm going to use the one that was facing up because I don't want to do two <laughs> the queen of forces also it's wow great can you see can you see I want you to see and enjoy it kind of brings a cool vibe to it this lighting <laughs> interesting light son I have like um leaves and branches here so it creates like these uh, shades all right let's read about the queen of forces taurus are you the queen of forces mm. there she is can you see there we go story time Kind of my favorite time. Uh, the Queen of Forces. This card shows a woman balancing the energies of a sun in one hand and a moon in the other already resonating, with a ri river flowing beneath her feet. The Queen of Forces represents a woman who can help to bring greater balance to your life. She brings an unusual combination of power and peace, creativity and receptivity in both her energy and her support. Sometimes this card can represent a person in your life, either you or another, coming into a phase of great power and an ability to sustain it with wonderful results. There is a gift of grace and serene understanding when this card is upright. It also brings new roles and opportunities, careers in many of the sciences, global communication, nature and energy may now be available to you. The Queen of Sources could also indicate the appearance of a possible love interest or an associate in business or in a creative project who has powerful influence and connections for you or for another. It may be someone you know or somebody new, but when this card appears, there is a tender yet powerful support. During this time, choose to support yourself as well. You hold the forces of the sun, creativity, and moon receptivity and only you yourself can direct the energy of your eternal life this is very much the combination of the chariot and the uh, temperance that we spoke of Let me see here where can you see it perfectly i want you to see it all see it all there it is <laughs> sort Okay, okay, guys, I've been yattering too much. I will see you in a second in the extended link below, uh, link to Tarot Masterclasses also below. My email is also below for a uh, private reading. Uh, I will see you guys in November. Check out your other placements. Check out your October readings. Um, happy Halloween. I love you very, very much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then now's your time. Okay, see you around, guys. Bye.